Yes, sir. You guys should know by now who is that DJ and like that. That's DJ Ryan Wolf. One of the hottest DJs in Cleveland right now. What's going on, guys? Lockout Men back again with another podcast for you guys. I have a, a friend of the show that's on the phone right now. She decided to come on and uh, talk about her experience with uh, with a male Karen. Uh, I mean, these these Karens and Kins of the world, man, they they need to stop, man. I mean, they need to get they need to get some type of life, man, for real. Like, where they come from? I mean, are they like are are, are they like? like sprawled up like plants and shit you know what i'm saying i mean the coin term phrase of a karen if you guys don't know is uh white people calling the police or doing something doing some crazy shit uh doing some crazy shit that involves a black person uh unfortunately a uh, karen situation happened to this young lady She's a friend of the show. Uh, she been on before. Uh, had an interview with her back in the, you know, early this year, I think. Early this year or, or late last year, something like that. Not sure, but uh, she decided to come on and tell her experience with, uh, with a certain Karen slash Ken. Let's bring on to the show AC the Mogo. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Welcome back. Welcome back to the show. Uh Thank you. the first time the first time we talked with each other, you you was actually in training with uh with with the company yeah. you're with, right? Yeah, so I was with my first trainer at that time. Oh, okay. So now uh so now uh, some months later, you 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 actually driving with the company, so you 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 upgraded. Yes, I did. I upgraded. I'm a leasing lease driver now. Oh, okay, okay. How how how's the experience going for you now? You uh you you liking the company? You making that you you making that money now, or what's where where we at? Well, outside of what happened today. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's been, I'm just trying to really get into a routine. This is going on my third week alone. Mm -hmm. So I don't really, um, I can't really, you know, I'm still kind of early to say, but my first week and my second week, um, those paychecks were really well. And this one is not, you know, I don't get paid again until tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So I won't even know, you know, how this one is going. But so far, so good. I mean, um, I wouldn't complain. I think it's just me having to get into a routine and time management. Like, as of tonight, I only got, like, an hour of sleep. Mm -hmm. So, stuff like that. You know, just managing my time and my clock is really a challenge right now. Okay, okay. So, you, uh, so, so, you don't, well, people already know who you're rocking out for. So, you know, it's no bit secret, but that, mm -hmm. that she, that she's rocking yeah. out for Prime. So Prime keeping mm -hmm. uh keeping you rolling, they they keeping you good. They sure are. They, they sure are. Back to back. Okay, okay. <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's up. Well, let's uh let's uh let's switch gears right quick. Uh you sent me a video and uh yeah. I, I wanna I wanna I wanna play the video right quick and then you can uh you can share okay. your thoughts on it. So this man tells okay. me I can't park here. I say, okay, I go in the store. I come out, get ready to move. He writes on my window. Mm. He writes on my window. I ask him, why did he write on my window when I was getting ready to move? He starts cursing me out. He's coming out of the car right now, banging on my door, banging on my door right now, trying to tell me to move. The police are on your way. Good, tell him you wrote on my window. Good, good. You were told, don't you, and you were told you can move the cones. Oh, and I said, okay, get away from my truck. Move the goddamn truck. Get away from my truck. Wow. Man, AC. 
AC, where? All right, so talk to us, man. What what the hell happened, man? Where where were you when all this took place? So I was in Sonac, New York. Um, the shipper is not too far from that store. Actually, you can literally walk um, a couple couple not even a block away to get to the, the receiver. I mean, that I was at. Mm-hmm. So I left the receiver. It's like almost four in the morning at this point. He is dark outside. I'm clearly tired. So I've been working. I drove all day to get there. I just got unloaded. So I go to that to that pilot is where it was to um, try and find some parking because there's no place to park. When I get there, everybody is like double parked. Like all the trucks are like, we're you know we kind of you know if you're a trucker you know we kind of rack up next to each other and make sure that everybody can get out. You know. So that's, that's pretty much how I was. I just parked behind some other trucks that were parked um, without a spot. We kind of made our own spot. So beside me on my right-hand side to the back of my truck was his, his truck, this guy Fred, that's what his name is. This guy Fred, um, this is before I had met him, but I've seen that truck there, and he had a couple cones where he could move the cones and he could just pull on out. So I'm like, all right, that should be enough because there's literally nowhere else for, I, for me to park. And my clock is, you know, gone. I need to reset. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to park here. I go, get ready to go, I get out the truck, get ready to go in the store. Fred approaches me. This is the first time meeting. So he's like, oh, you can't park here. Uh, he's like, you can't park here. And I see he has on a pilot shirt. That's the only reason I, you know, entertained it because he works for the company that I'm parked at. So I'm like, okay, you know. So he's like, well, you you mean you can't park here? Uh, you can park anywhere else or whatever. I was like, well, why can't I park here? You're blocking me in. I said, well, there is phones there. I said, well, I'm going to run in and use the restroom and, and grab some stuff. So he goes about his way and he just, you know, still tries to keep telling me I can't park there. I go about my way. I go in the store, use the restroom, get my stuff, come out. So I come out and I see pink, pink writing on my window. As I'm walking towards my truck, I'm like, I immediately know it was him. So I go, I go to his truck, but not so close to where he was to mine. I stand probably, I'm still in the vicinity of my own truck. I didn't get that close to him, but I'm like, I'm talking loud enough so he can hear me. Because I don't know this man. I'm not about to walk up on him like that. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I said, well, I said, you run on my truck? So then he was like, yeah, said, you should have moved. But you went into the store. What makes you think that your life matters more than mine? I'm like, Ooh. what? Whoa. I said, Man. yeah, like, what makes you think that your time and your life matters more than mine? I said, what? I'm like, what the heck? He's watching some Black Lives Matter type stuff. You know what I mean? This is what I'm thinking, but I didn't say this. I'm like, what? I said, I said, I went to the restroom. I said, I went there to use the restroom. I said, I was getting ready to move. I said, I didn't have a problem moving. We just had a whole conversation. I said, but that doesn't give you a right to go and vandalize my truck. Don't write on my truck. He said, I write on anybody's truck that's in my way. I said, okay. So I started walking away. Okay, hold up. Like, hold up, 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 hold up. Let me pause right there. Pause, yeah. pause right yeah. there. So you, so yeah. he was, what, what, what was he, a tanker driver or something like that? Because. Uh, yeah. He, so yeah, he, he was a fuel person. Okay, so he was a fuel, mm-hmm. so he was a tanker driver. So he was saying that you was, yeah. you was in his way? Yeah. But how, how? Yeah, so he's saying that. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Mm-hmm. My my truck was parked near the fuel line, the tanker fuel line. Mm-hmm. But like I said, he could have moved the cones and got out. That's why I parked there because there's nowhere else to go. But I seen he had cones there. I'm like, okay, he's got enough space to get out if he needs to. Right. But even though we just had that conversation, I was gonna move, no problem. Let me go use the restroom. There's nowhere else for me to park right now. So I go in, use the restroom, and this is what happens. So I'm. So then I'm like, okay, so I'm, I'm starting to walk away from, you know, walk away from him once he confirmed he rode on my truck, but I'm still upset. So I get, so I hear him, he's cursing me out. I don't know exactly what he's saying. He's like, you know, I'm hearing curse words, but that's, I don't, I'm not, I'm just like starting to walk away from him. So I go to my truck and I get in, I lock the door. I'm sitting here because now I'm shaking because I'm upset because I really, I really am upset at this point. So I'm like, I need to just cool off before I do anything, before I pull off. I don't, you know, think rationally. This man just really vandalized my truck. And now I see him in the side of my mirror uh, getting out of his truck, walking towards me. That's when I just turned the camera on. And I'm like, oh, no, I don't, you know, I don't trust him. 
So I turned the camera on, mm-hmm. and of course, here he goes, walking up to my truck, banging on my door. And I'm like, is he serious? I did not touch his truck. I did not vandalize his truck. I didn't curse him out. But here he is doing all these things to me. So that that's the footage that you caught on that clip. And um, once I cut the video off, he walks around to the front of my truck, gets my truck number. He's on the phone with his. At the time, I'm thinking he was on the phone with police. Because as you heard in the video, he was like, I just called the police. And he was like, they're on their way or whatever. And I was like, good. You know, tell me he wrote on my window. So I'm thinking he's on the phone with the police. But he wasn't. He was on the phone with the, with the pilot corporation. He had somebody then come out of the pilot store to tell me to move. So here comes a man, a black man at this point. He comes up to my truck and tells me, saying, so he this uh, you, and get out. I said, not a problem with it. Uh, you huh? you you breaking up there a little bit, AC. I, I didn't catch the loop, uh, the 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 few that you just said. You said so. I, right. I think you said a, a a black manager or a black person came up out of the store and, yeah. and told you to move. Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. I can hear you now. All right. You go ahead and continue. Okay. So now I found out that he wasn't this the guy Fred. He wasn't on the phone with the police at this point. He was on the phone with the corporate office with Pilot. Mm-hmm. So he he called somebody from Pilot and Pilot the corporation office one of the employees to come out and tell me to move. Okay. So there, that's what I'm saying. There was a black man who came out and he comes to my truck and he's like, you know, you, you know, hey man, we brought the computer lane or whatever. I said, I understand. I said, I said, he has phones there. He could get out. I said, there's nowhere else to park. And I said, in addition, I didn't have a problem moving. I said, I was coming to move. I said, but then he wrote on my truck, you know, so then he, uh, he just writing, right? He just, but uh, you you drowning out again. Say anything to him. So then he was like, well, I haven't yet. I said, well, are you going to say anything to him? But then he was like, yeah, I'll mention it. But my friend comes back around to meet the, um, the guy from the store. And he says, you know, she's going to move. But why did you write on her truck? So here goes the man Fred again, going off, person on the tangent. And all this stuff. So we had a few choices to change the words. I can't remember everything I said. Just pretty much explaining myself. I still at this point did not person out. So now I'm like, you know what? It's time to call the police. Because I don't know what I'm thinking he called the police. I don't know. I don't want to be the victim here. I don't want them coming. You know, with all this stuff going on with police these days, mm-hmm. I want the call to come for me. So I called the police. And I'm like, um... You know, I told him what happened, that there's this guy here taking my plate number and everything, and he's, like, harassing me, banging on my door, he rode on my truck, and, you know, he, he's circling around my truck at this point. And they're like, okay, we're going to send someone out. You know, So you, I, said, I told the manager. No, go ahead, go ahead. Well, you know what, I'm going to move. I didn't have a problem moving. I said, but before I move, I'm going to get his information. So I got out the truck and I went to his truck and I wrote down everything on my phone, his license plate and everything. And that's when he was like, he's like, oh, yeah, you want my name, too? My name is fucking Fred. He's like, make sure you spell it right. I'm like, wow. So, yeah, that's how I figured out his information. So then I moved out of his way and he pulled off. And as he's pulling off, he's like, and don't he's like, please know that your company is going to hear about this, too. So I called the police and then I called my company and I told them, hey. There's a guy who was harassing me. He wrote on my truck um, and everything. And they were like, well, you know, you know, if he calls, then they're probably not going to do anything but call safety. But don't worry. We're not going to do anything. I'm glad you let us know. So I'm like, okay. So that was that. The police then comes after Fred pulls off. And um, now at this point, I'm crying because I'm emotional. Like, I'm upset that I even have to go through this. And it's like 4 in the morning, 5 in the morning now. And I'm tired. I've been working. And I feel like I feel like if I was a if I was a male, he wouldn't have done that. And then I feel like it's the fact that I'm a woman. And then I don't know. He probably got some issues with black people because for him to say, "Oh, you think your life matters more than mine?" Like, what the heck is he talking about? So it was just it was just an emotional situation. So the police they just took, they just took notes, asking for my ID. So I'm like, "Am I in trouble?" So you know, he asked me for my ID. I'm like, "Am I in trouble?" He's like, "Oh no, not at all." 
So he was like, well, um, there's nothing we could do now because he left. He was like, well, did you get his plate number or anything? I said, I sure did. And I gave him all the information. So then he was like, well, we're going to try and track him down and we'll tell him, you know, the next time to call us instead of doing that. And I'm looking like, that's it? You know, like he's, van- he's vandalizing property. I can't get him on anything else. That's all I have to do. So that's why when you just called me, I just decided I'm going to call his job because that's not a way to conduct yourself. It's not a way that you treat another person, period, especially not a person that's, uh, you know, spending their money with that company and you work for that company. That's not how you treat them. You can tell me to move, that's fine, and I can move, but you don't ride on my truck, you don't curse me out, um, or, or bang on my truck, or any of that. So, that was my morning. All right, so, so where where were you where this took place? What, what city and state you were in? It's called Sodak, New York. Sodak. It's like right off the edge of Pennsylvania. Sodak, mm-hmm. New York. Man, New York. Mm, yeah. New York people, man. So this dude, um, so in actuality, hold on for a second. Hold on. Yeah. There we go. All right, there we go. I had to restart my camera. Um, so, so you, I mean, you told this dude, you, you, you told this dude that you had to go and run in and, and use the restroom. You know what I'm saying? He he wasn't, he, he didn't give you no type of compassion. Like, yo, I had to run in and use the restroom and I'll come right back and I'll move up out your way. I mean, you see that the parking lot is all double park. It's nowhere for me to park. I'm a female, you know yeah, what I'm saying? I'm trying to, there. you know, yeah. I, I'm I'm trying to go in there and and use the restroom, but yet you 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 come back out to having him right on your truck. Yeah, yeah. And that, that ain't that ain't cool. Yeah, that, that ain't that ain't cool at all, man. That ain't, that ain't that ain't cool at all. And then he's gonna come back and bang. He's gonna come yeah. back and bang on your door. Like he's the police, and over here asking you to ask me yeah. to f and move and all like that. I mean, was you like in his way, in his way, or could he got out of? I mean, he could have, no. he could have went around you, he right? Moved those towns. Yeah, he could have moved those towns, and he could have went about his way. That's why I said in the video, I said, no, you, I said it. And he said, I, I told you not to park here. He's demanding that I move. I told you not to park here. Move the goddamn truck. And I said, and I, and I, and he's like, you were told, you were told not to park here. I said, and you were told you can move the cones. Like, literally, if he could have moved those cones out of the way, he would have been able to get out with no problem. But instead of using your energy to move the cones, he used his energy to ride on my truck. Do you think, do, so what's the difference? Do you think, uh, do do you think if you was a man, a black man at that, do you think he would have did the same thing to to that to that black man no. if I mean you know if 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 there was a black man there, you think he would have came at him the same way? No, I think he probably would have had some words with him, but he wouldn't have definitely not rolled on his truck. And he definitely wouldn't have came up and banged on his door like that. Now, That's what I think. I think that he seemed that I was a female. Now, and then I was alone. Now another question that I now another question that I want to ask is if if you was if I mean you you felt that he came he came at you because you was a you was a woman. I mean, you know, you do you and being that he mentioned, you know, the 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 color barrier. So he came after you. He came after you the way he came after you because you was a black woman. You felt you you felt that's how he came at you like that. For sure. So this is your first this is is this your first time in trucking experiencing uh, a situation like you just experienced last night? Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I've had a choice word with a woman inside of a store, but she didn't work for the company. <laughs> so that was just a woman inside of a store. But yeah, this is the first instance where it was another trucker 
that works for that company that actually wrote on my truck. Yeah, for sure. Nobody's ever did anything crazy like that before. Man, that's that's crazy. I'm 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 sorry to hear that. You know, and I'm 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 sorry for the way for the way of the world now. You know what I'm saying? The way of the world is going is going to hell in the handbasket right now. You know, you guys know that I had a situation back a couple of couple of weeks ago with a with a guy, you know, that I was in the uh, at the shipper or at the receiver. And he came up and he came up to me and asked me, you know, my situation because I was black or some shit like that. And um, and yeah, it's just getting a little it's just getting a little bit out of hand, man. I mean, you know, I like you know like i said i i i agree with you i i don't think he would have came he you know he would have came with that same energy if it was a if it was a white guy or or another black guy for that matter i i just think that he saw you as a woman he saw you as weak you know what i'm saying and he just wanted to you know pour all his negative energy into you you know what i'm saying so, like I said, I I, yeah. I am so sorry for you to experience uh, a situation like that. Um, after after the whole ordeal, uh, after the whole ordeal or during the ordeal, how was you feeling? I mean, was you scared? Was you uh, kind of you know? I know you felt some kind of way. How, what was you feeling at the time? There was a there was an array of different feel an array of different feelings. I did feel angry. I felt frustrated. Um, when I I felt calm though, a sense of calm because I knew I couldn't allow myself to get out of character dealing with somebody like a Karen because you know, at the end of the day, all of the all of the all of the laws are stacked against me, no matter. So it's like I can't really allow myself to get out of character no matter what he did to me. Mm-hmm. Also fear because you know i don't know this man i don't have a gun i only have mates and you know i'm not gonna run up on him even though i felt like i could take him i mean i'm younger <laughs> he's older i felt like i could take him but i wouldn't because i i know that it like i said the powers are stacked against me no matter what he's doing no matter how he's cursing me out so that's where the anger was coming from like he's talking to me like i'm crap and then he thinks i'm weak because i'm a female you know and he can get away with it and then the fear was him banging on my door and um, then the fear of me reacting the wrong way. And he's on the phone threatening to call whoever he's calling and me not knowing what who he's doing and what he's doing. It He's got my truck number. So is he threatening my job? So it was like all sorts of different types of fear of that. But me just having a sense of calm, you know, in the midst of all of it, I just tried to think about how I respond because I cannot control you. Nobody can control something that somebody else is doing and how he felt and what he was saying and what he was doing was a reflection of who he is and how he felt. It had nothing to do with me. So in that moment, I just tried to center myself and remember, you know, not to get out of character because the cars are stacked up against me and I'm not trying to lose my job. I'm not trying to go to jail for beating this man up, (laughs) you know, and then I don't know if he has any weapons. So I can't, You know, even if I was to beat him up, what if he doesn't, you know, he has a gun or something like that. So it was all types of things running through my head. I also wanted to, I wish another black man would have seen it because I know that they would have came over to help me or to say something They probably wouldn't have, they they probably wouldn't have, wouldn't have take that. They they definitely, I don't think they definitely would have take that. But speaking of another black man coming over, you say that, now you say that it was a black man uh, that worked it for the company that came out to uh assist in the situation so Mm -hmm. what was what was his thing how how did you feel how did you feel how he handled the situation between y'all two it seemed like he was just doing he was just trying to get me to move and when it came it's like he didn't like you ever you ever met a person that was like you ever had an argument and a person feels like they're in the middle? Mm-hmm. So they didn't want to say nothing to either party. That was the vibe I was getting from him. Oh, okay. Like, he knew that the guy shouldn't have rode on my truck, but he also knew that I was, like, in the near the, like, I guess, 
I guess you could say blocking the shoe line, even though he had tongues that he could move. So he was like in the middle. So he was allowing me to say whatever I had to say. And he was there, you know, I said whatever I had to say to the man. And then he was listening as the man was saying, like, cursing me out. So he wasn't really saying or doing anything except for wanting me to move. But once I expressed that I didn't have a problem moving and that I would get his plate number and everything, he just he just stood there while we while we kind of went back and forth. And until I got back in my truck, he stood there until I moved. Hmm. So it wasn't like he, he didn't come to my defense or to my aid or he barely even, all he said was, why did he said, did you write on her truck or why did you write on her truck? That's all he said. He didn't say, well, you shouldn't have or, you know, but he was quick to tell me you're blocking the fuel. So it was, you know, and he, I felt like he, he didn't really count because he worked there. <laughs> I, I feel like if another driver, like a black a man driver would have came up and said something, it would have been different. Or maybe he would have been able to calm himself down. Or who knows? Maybe it would have just, it would have escalated the situation even more. So, well, man, I'm just glad it's over. Well, AC, I, I'm I'm glad it's over too. I I, I want to say that uh, it it might. I, I want to say it won't happen again, but who knows in this uh in this in this trucking field, man? Because you know, people, you know, truck drivers, we we just a different breed out here. You know what I'm saying? You you gonna run in? You gonna run into those types uh types of truck drivers? You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's just best to try to keep your calm, try to keep your peace and try not to let them take you out of your zone and, you know, see if you can defuse the situation on a calm level. If not, you know what I'm saying? Just make sure you stay protected and you protect yourself, you know, because, you know, you, you, you ain't got time for the bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You ain't got time for the mm-hmm. bullshit out here. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's crazy that you know that we just can't we, we just can't get along no more you know what i'm saying you know the the yeah. you know i mean she she's a female like she had to go to the bathroom could you like could you like give her a couple of minutes to go to the bathroom? You know what I'm saying? It ain't like we, it ain't like she can just jump out the truck, run up inside of the motherfucking trailer and, and whoop her shit out and, exactly. and take a piss. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, you, you could at least gave her that respect, you know, but you over here disrespecting her. Like she's some type of bee off the, off the street. Like she's a lot lizard or some well, shit like that. I'm a driver. You know, exactly. I mean, she's another driver. Exactly. Like, you know, I mean, if, if even if she did come and block you or get in your way or something like that, when she told you that she was just going to run into the restroom, you you could have gave her a couple of minutes, you know, mm-hmm. and she was just going to run into the re- How long you was in the restroom? Oh, not very long. I'd say a total... I probably was in the store for maybe 10 minutes because I grabbed some stuff when I was on the way out. Yeah. But he didn't tell me he was leaving immediately. He said he was going to let, I, you know, I'm thinking we're all parked for the night. He didn't say he was leaving. If he said he was going to leave immediately, like I'm about to leave or anything like that, when I told him I was going to the restroom, then yeah, I probably would have just pulled up and let him go out. But he didn't tell me any of that. He just waited until I disappeared and then he rolled on my truck. That's some whole shit right there. Oh. You're gonna come back. You, you're gonna come. Yeah, you're and now gonna write. You're gonna write on the. You're gonna write on somebody's truck, man. For real. How how would you feel if somebody yeah, wrote on your crazy. fucking truck, bro? You wouldn't like that shit. Did you uh, get a chance to wipe it no. off, or is did you get a chance to wipe it off, or is it still Man. on there? Not at all. Not at all. I'm driving right now, and it's a stain on my day. It's like it's like. It's like it didn't happen, right? Because all we really have after each moment is a story to tell. Mm-hmm. So it's like there's no really evidence of it. It's just a memory that happened. But I look over my window and I still see the damn lighting on my window as I'm driving right now. So, yeah, it happened. And it's here. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. Well, AC the Mogul, I hope, uh, I hope the rest of your day is as beautiful as you are. Um, I hope, uh, you know, I hope what would, you know, I I don't, 
this this uh this a lesson this a lesson learned what do you what do you what do you think you you learned out of this encounter right here um maybe if i have to take responsibility for anything i would probably ask him is he leaving right now that's what i probably would say are you leaving right now Mm -hmm. um and uh, in addition to that i would um Stand up for myself by calling his job, which is what I'm going to do. Those are the lessons I'm taking. I'm going to call his job and I'm going to report him. And hopefully he, he, you know, he gets some type of, um, he'd be penalized somehow for being disrespectful, you know, when he's wearing that uniform as, you know, a driver, a pilot driver, and he's doing that to another person. So hopefully he's penalized for it and I have proof of it. And that's what I plan to do. That's what's up. So would it, that's all I can say. If I take responsibility, if I, what, I, I would just tell him. I would just ask him if he was going to move right now. What it, What advice you got to give for for uh, females that's that that might be in the that might incur 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 the same situation as you? What advice would you give them? Um, I would kind of tell them maybe to learn from what I did as far as. You know, yeah, ask them, are they getting ready to move right now? Or ask them, is it okay if, you know, you run into the restroom real quick? In addition, if they feel um, out of character and you come to your car and you see something like that, call the police, get in the car, lock the door, just like you see me do. Um, wait till the manager comes out. If you have words to speak to them, don't just run up on his truck. Um, make sure you have your mace on you, because I do have mace just in case he decides he wants to put his hands on you or anything like that. I know we can't legally carry a gun, so... I can't tell them to do that. Um, and yeah, I would just make sure that you play the, you play Karen. That's what you do. You play Karen. You play Karen when they, when they get to attacking you, that's when you call the cops and, oh my God, there's a white male and he, I'm, I'm very afraid and he's, he's vandalizing me, he's harassing me and you cry victim because that's the only way that you're going to get some help because it seems like the other way around, they look at me as the attacker. No matter what they're what they're doing. All right. So hey, that's all I can really say. Well, that's what's up. That is what's up. Hold on, real quick. That is what's up. All right, AC the mogul. Thanks for coming on and sharing your experience with me today, man. I really do appreciate it. Uh you you definitely Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for coming back, man. It's unfortunate that you came back and you know, we had to we had to talk about this unfortunate circumstances right now, but you know what I'm saying? But it's, it's all about, it's, it's all about the experience. You know what I'm saying? It's, it just makes you, it just makes you more, uh, more of a person that you are today, you know, in this trucking field, you know what I'm saying? Because shit happens in this, in this, in this trucking field, man. And it's just, it, it's just crazy that, you know, some of us, some of us just can't, get along you know what i'm saying you know some some of the old timers just think we're we're just some you know some dumb steering wheel holders i mean there are some you know what i'm saying but not all of us is that though you know get to know us before before you start judging us you know i like that yeah. Well, everybody, well, that is it for this uh, podcast this morning. Uh, if you like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell for more content like this. And when you hit that all button, make sure you hit that so you can receive all of the content that I put out. I am your humble host, Lockout Men, and this is the Lockout Men podcast show. I really do appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate you guys listening. Hold on. I appreciate you guys listening. And then until next time, my cousin is about to play us out. Who is that DJ like that? And on that note right there, you guys have a blessed day. And I will come back at you guys with another video. Y'all take it easy, and I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.